So without further ado, let us go back to the Zoom machine and say hello to Pat H.D. Barry. There he is. What's up, Pat? How are you? Hey, what's happening, man? How are you doing? I'm doing great. <clears throat> Thank you for doing this, my friend. Uh, it's good to have you on the program. Could I ask, you know, eventful weekend for you guys, um, eventful aftermath. What have the last few days like been like for you since, you know, the, the, the fight on Saturday, what have they been like for you? Well, uh, I guess, I mean, like, like normal, um, the fights on Saturday, we leave the arena, go back to the hotel, pack up our bags, go straight to the airport, fly home. So I think we were home by like maybe 6 a.m. on Sunday, Wow. still awake from Saturday. Then we stay up all day Sunday, just like normal. It's the, it's the normal process, just going over everything that went down, the entire training camp, the entire fight week, the entire fight, letting all of the, I guess, uh, learning lessons or you know things like let them just slowly expose themselves or, or become more uh, apparent to us. And you go to sleep Monday morning, wake up Tuesday, and we're back to normal. And back by, to life, man. It's been, it's been, it's been, uh, it's a, it's a big week. Yes. It's a lot to process. I saw Rose in the background over there. So hello to her as well. If she can hear me. Hey. Um, hey. hello. Hey, I'm doing laundry. Uh, I didn't want to, I didn't want to be rude and just ignore your presence, but uh, we saw you walking no, in the okay, background yeah. there. Uh, hope you're doing well. And look, stars, they're just like us. They also have to do laundry on a Wednesday. I know. Right? Well, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's never, never ending. And you got the um, Ruka shirt there yeah, too. But, Respect. Um, can I ask you? Yeah, wh yeah. Wh why do you Why do you do that? Why do you do the thing where you drive straight? You know, where you go, you stay up all night. Like, why do you guys do that thing on the Sunday? Why do you put yourself through that? Uh, we've agreed a long time ago that the fight is never over until we get home. Like that yeah. was that was a oh. Oh, I, I think maybe just one. Thing. I mean, there's many different reasons. I think there's just like an instinctual kind of impulse to just uh, get back to my place because uh, post, like there's just lots of emotions that go into it, whether it's like win, loss, draw, I don't care what it, what the situation is. And like, you might feel a type, a certain type of way, like impulsively. And then you, you don't want to like, I feel like it's very easy the closer it is to post fight it's very easy to make dumb decisions and like, uh, or do something out of character like that. You just, that's kind of unrecognizable to yourself, you know, because of just the, so many variables of just different things going on that, you know, you just, you get, uh, yeah, you don't want to, you you, you want to get back to home and kind of back to this, like ground yourself before you kind of make any, decisions that might the, affect the rest of your life or something, you know? Yeah, okay. so we, we yeah. like I said, we came up a long time ago. We, uh, we decided that the fight's not over until you get home. So every fight, no matter where it's at, when the fight's over with, it's still a mission. Once we get home, close the doors, put the bags down, that's when that's when we've made it slid into home plate, you know. Okay, that makes back, sense. Back to just like just like uh, who was that? The Warriors are trying to get yeah. back to Coney Island. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get yeah, it. it just got I feel it. like it's like you got to reset because I feel like that that's such a vulnerable time for like athletes or just a competitor that I feel like you can be very impressionable by the rest of the world as far as like you know I don't know you just you, I, I just feel like it's a very vulnerable time and it's like nope I gotta get back to center I gotta, you know, make sure I'm like me and then I can, I can reintroduce myself to the rest of the world because, you know, it's really easy to, it's start. Easy to get, you know, yeah. Influenced by things that, you know, aren't necessarily bad, but they're maybe not you, you know? How do you feel Pat about the fight in retrospect? Now, a few days later about what went down uh, on Saturday. Uh, a lot. A lot happened. Uh, how do I feel about it? I have to, well, one, I've got to for sure choose my words wisely to make sure this comes out the right way. But um, I'm, it's not going to sound uh, correct. It's not going to sound like the right thing, but I'm happy with where we are right now. Uh, just as a, a FYI, or just a heads up to everybody else uh, out there in the world that's normally that follow patterns and are normally expecting this is the moment where Rose disappears for three years and shaves her eyebrows off and comes back and she's completely nuts in the head because of the result. And none of that's going on. None, none of that's going on. Um, we all as fighters, there's different, different types of fights that you have. There's different days that the fight day just happens to fall on. And 
this was uh, this was one of those fights and one of those days where this is how it's going to go. This is how it's going to go. No one's going to understand, but this is how it's going to go. And um, it, it, it went the way that it went. It's not the result that we were looking for. It's not what we trained for. It's not the result that we uh, prepared for. But um, I knew throughout the entire training camp, Rose was Rose needed a certain answer question. She needed a certain question answered to herself, like internally, like he, just personally, she had something that she was looking for. And somewhere in those five rounds, she found it. Somewhere in the five rounds, she got that answer to that. Whatever the question was that she was looking for, she got it in that five rounds. Um, that's why we can be sitting here today and she's actually genuinely happy, uh, comfortable, content. Oh, no, no. I was just listening, but I did have something to say, but... <laughs> well, well, I, I'm just oh, curious. No, I think... What is the question and what is the answer? What was the question and what was the answer? Okay, so, I mean, just in a general sense, I would say that it just basically had to do with... I had, like, three goals, you know? Like, <clears throat> my base level goals, like, come out on skates, like, happy, healthy, and safe. And then uh, number two was, like, obviously win the fight. <laughs> and then uh, some people, sometimes it's, like, I don't give a shit. That's all I'm looking for. And then ultimately it was like, not only win, but like dominate and set myself apart from the rest of the division. That's why I talked about it in all my interviews leading up to it. And like I said, I literally said, I was like, I'll take what I can get though. You know, because uh, like ultimately for this fight, all that matters is that I'm happy, healthy and safe because of, you know, just the patterns in which my career has gone and all that stuff. Uh, that, yeah, that was the main thing that, and so as far as like all the things I want to get out of this, I got like base level, everything that I wanted as far as <laughs> I got what I wanted out of it. And and it's crazy. It might sound crazy to people because I think they look at Carla as like this, you know, like what is this Carla, you know? And it's like, no, she, there was a, there's many moments to get in a lot of danger. So, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, my, what? Oh, sorry. Wait, I just, uh, yeah, go. Uh, <laughs> Was you the one I it up? I, I, okay, wait. I am just have to ask before. Okay. Is this titled, we're interviewing Pat Barry today and Rose happens okay, to be yeah, jumping okay. in? Or is it's, it, no, no, it's fine. I just want to make sure this isn't one of those, the dude's always in here. Nah, nah. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, for sure. We know. Is, I'm, I'm in Pat's interview, guys. That's right, that's right. <laughs> Actually, that's the first time we ever, way back in the day, that was the first time we ever met Rose on this show. I was interviewing you about some yeah. fight. And yeah. she was in the background. I don't know if you remember that. Um, <laughs> so the tables turned over the years, but now we're back to the original. Anyhow. Now we're back to the original. <laughs> um, but uh, this is, this. it's, um, styles make fights. I mean, I have to use that quote in there. Um, you know, Rose, phrase, Rose stuck to a game plan. We had a strategy and she stuck to it for the first time ever. So the first time ever she stuck to the game plan and didn't stray away. She didn't become undisciplined. She stuck to it. it. Just so happens that Carla stuck to her game plan too. And neither one of them broke. That's all we were waiting for. If you go back and we watched it once, only once, we're probably never going to watch it again. But we went back to it. And every time they click over to Carla's corner in between rounds, you can hear Carla Oyama saying she's about to do that thing that she always does. The crowd's booing. She's getting frustrated. She's going to do that thing. And when she does it, you know exactly what to do. And this was the scenario. This was the, this was the scenario, man. Fighters, how many times have you seen fighters come out that are just amazing at everything that they do? And then they wind up in some type of a silly scenario that maybe they shouldn't be in. You know, maybe that maybe that they shouldn't be. And Rose has been one for creating masterpieces every time she gets in there, almost every time. Nine out of ten times when she gets in there, it's amazing. I've been saying it since the beginning. This girl is amazing, man. She's something else. I know it was always, you know, people sound like I'm just being excited because it's her, but it's not. She's literally my favorite fighter on the planet, man. I I love her style, the way she moves, the things that she's capable of doing. And over time, if you look at her record and if you look at her performances, majority of the time, she's that's the thug rose everybody's in love with. Everybody fucking 
Sorry. Right. Sorry for that language. Everybody loves like that's what people show up for. People show up to see Thug Rose do something amazing because every time she gets in there, nine out of 10 times, mm -hmm. it's something amazing. It's just every once in a while, a fight lands on one of those days, man. It's just a fight lands on just one of those days where there can be explanations, there can be reasonings for things, but it's just every once in a while, you just have one of those days and it just so happens that this was one of those days. She stuck to the game plan. She stuck to the game plan so much that when we were asking her to come out of the game plan, she looked like, ha, ha, ha. Oh, he's trying to get me. Stick to the game plan. This is there's a lot of things that went through the training camp. There was moments in the training camp where Rose had been doing everything that she's supposed to do. This was best training camp she's ever had. This is the most growth mentally, which I've always said, it's never physical. It's never for for her. For her, it's never physical. It's always about the mind, man. It's always in the head. It's always, always, always. If she's motivated, if she's driven, if she has a purpose, we've all seen what she can do. We've all seen, we've all seen it. We've all, we've all watched it over and over again. Just amazing. Amazing. Joanna one, bam, and Joanna two, gone. Jessica one, amazing until she decided to stray away from the game plan. Now she gets dropped on her head. That's, 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 that's the one thing that I think the general population or the world doesn't take into consideration. There are dire consequences for messing up in this game. There are consequences for messing up. If you stray away from the plan and you start to freestyle, which the majority of the time when she does, it's a work of art. But every once in a while, she'll stray away from the game plan and get her nose broken with one punch. I mean, think about it, Jessica part two. I don't think she got hit one time until two and a half minutes left in the last round. One punch, all because she decided to stray away from the per from the game plan. She decided to do her own thing. And she got punished for it in the first fight with Jessica. Everything's going great, almost a clean sweep. She decided to stray away from the game plan. Doof, dropped on her head, almost broken her neck. Like there's big consequences to not sticking to what it is that you're training to do, to not trusting what it is that your coaches and team are supposed to put together. Now, Rose always is going to always trust herself over any and everything, always. And like I said, most of the time when she does, it's a work of art. But every once in a while, every once in a while, making that decision to freestyle can potentially turn out bad. Most of the time it turns out great, but it always runs the risk of you're doing that thing. And when you do that thing, this time, sometimes bad things happen. A uh, good example. We had, I think it was six weeks ago. Rewind time. Rose's grandmother is one of the most important people in her life. She raised Rose and her brother. They were, she was always a part of their life. She's a very important part. Uh, of Rose's life. Rose had a sparring day where after sparring, sparring is at 12, at one o'clock, her family was getting on a big Zoom call, family in Lithuania, family wherever they are, all for like the grandmother's birthday, mm. right? Five rounds, that's it. Five rounds of sparring, then we're gonna shower up and we're gonna go head over to the place, get on the call. It's gonna be the big family reunion on Zoom, birthday for the grandmother. It was round five. I leaned over and I said, 30 seconds. And when I said 30 seconds, Rose decided for the first time in her training camp, this was six weeks ago, this, we've been going since January, for the first time, she decided to just go off of the strategy and she ran right into a knee and had the biggest, goofiest, like Ace Ventura black eye, like this big swollen baseball on her cheek completely black swollen eye all because look at what happens look what happens when you look what happens it's not that that happens all the time but when you when you stray away from the strategy things like this can happen like in jessica one jessica two uh moments in the in the wheel in the whaley fight where maybe she took a punch that you know that just got a little closer than it should have been so she knows going into this fight 
you got to stick to the game plan because this is the kind of things that happen. Also, after the fight is Mother's Day. Mm. You have a phone call with your grandmother, who's your favorite person in the world, on Mother's Day. The last time you had this Zoom call, whether six weeks ago, you had to show up and give this crazy explanation why she's looking at you going, why are you still doing this? Like, what are you still doing this for? And you have to, you have to go and you have to talk to her with this big face and you just have to, uh, you know what I mean? It's, that, it's that, that type of thing. If you make mistakes at this level, the consequences are pretty heavy. The consequences are pretty heavy, man. So we went into this fight with a strategy. We have Carla memorized, man. We, we know everything that she's going to do before she does it. We know what it looks like. We know when to avoid, when to attack. This is a strategic, perfect game plan. And just so everyone knows, we went in there for the win. The plan was, was to win the fight. The plan was, was to do this thing in particular. And if you do this thing, people are going to start booing. They, 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 they're going to start booing, but that's only because they don't know what's going on. And when they do start booing, Carla's going to open up. And when she does, bam, there's it. That's the game. That's, that's the game over punch. And we all know Rose has one punch knockout power. And in the fight, she did everything perfect. Perfect. I love the UFC and I love everything the UFC does for everyone. And I love it. We love the organization. But I, I will say in the fight, there's three moments, but there's two in particular where bang, 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 bang. Here it comes. This is the time. And when Rose went to throw the punch, her foot slipped. I saw that. Mm. I saw it. I saw, I saw her foot slide. And when it did, I know my head went crazy, like, oh, there it is. You saw it. You was the best. We're going to kill him, man. It was, said, there it is. Like, I got all oh, there. And moved around, moved around, moved around. And when the, the opportunity for that one, the thing that we trained for, came again, and she went foot slip the second time. The second time, man. I love the UFC and everything they do, but this is, out of all of the fights I've ever had, even back in my career, this is the slipperiest canvas you can ever fight on, which at that moment, when she had the opening for the kill the second time, when she went for it and that foot slipped, I had like a moment of clarity, man. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, just all of a sudden I went from this crazy to completely, completely just calm. Apparently, the world is trying to make this very difficult for you. Apparently something is going on because I mean, of course, Rose and her spirituality and we look at things. So I have to think a certain way because she thinks a certain way. Something is trying to stop you from winning this fight. Something. I don't know. I saw the foot slip twice. When the second one happened, we caught eyes and I shook my head because as a coach, yes, we are there to win fights, but we're really there for longevity and happiness. That's what my job is, man. Not only my coach, but as a partner, fiance, whatever you want to label me as. Like that, um, that's my job is to make sure that Rose is happy, healthy, and safe for the rest of her life. So in that in that moment, I felt, hey, you know what? This is one of those scenarios where now that you've seen it twice and you've missed it twice, this is exactly the type of thing that's supposed to throw you off your game and make you come out of your, uh, come out of your strategy. And when you do come out of your strategy and you really go for it, you might accidentally slip and throw yourself on the ground. And now you fell on the ground because you did something you weren't supposed to do. Now she's on top of you and she's got you in a scenario where you don't want to be. And now you've got to battle yourself and you've got to battle Carla. And Carla is a two-time UFC world champion, which means she's one of the best fighters on the planet. Everything that she does, she has mastered. Everything that she does. And even though we have it all memorized and we know what's coming and we know what's, what's available, she's a master of what she does. Can I ask you And this, if you make... Yes, sir. In, in between the, I think it was the third round, you said something, you were alluding to this, you were like, you hear the booze, you hear the booze, it's it's working. That means we're doing our job. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously it's not something you often hear. What did you mean by that? 
Um, if Rose gets in there and you stick to your strategy, if you come in there and you do what you are supposed to do, the crowd's probably not going to like it. Mm. They're, they're not, they're not, they're, they're probably not going to like it at first. Now, when they start booing because they, they want instant kick to the face, it's Rose. It's not, it's, it's thug Rose. You know how you feel every time she walks out. I know how I feel every time she walks out. When Rose walks out, you're expecting to see something amazing every time, man. You're expecting your space. Just we're waiting for it. You're just waiting to see the highlight, the highlight reel. And oh my God, she's going up against college. She's going to throw her over the top of the fence. And you're just waiting for that. And it didn't come. Mm. The opportunity um, never really presented itself. Rose didn't break from her game plan and she didn't risk. She didn't risk anything. It's too dangerous of a fight. She did. She stuck to the game plan. And when the opportunity presented itself and she went for it, mm. foot slid. And it was like, ah, and then it presented itself again. And she, she went for it. You know, Carla didn't break from her game plan either. Like I said, we watched it once on TV. And this is, was great about watching it is every time the, car, the camera goes into Carla's corner in between rounds, you can hear her coach, Colin Oyama, saying exactly what they were expecting. Any minute now, she's going to break. Any minute now, Rose is about to do that thing. And she, when she does it, you know what to do. They were waiting. She waited for Rose to do that thing that Rose does. And she was going to take advantage of it. They were waiting for that. And we knew that. We knew. We knew. This isn't the moment where you flip out and start doing whatever it is that you want to do. Because you might find yourself in a bad spot. You have to have control. Now, where um, I blew it mm. is all of the training to have control, all of the training that I did, all of the training that we put together to stay in control of your emotions, stay in control of yourself, stay. We never once went over how to come out of that mm. because at the end of round four, myself, when I got in the ring and People are going to have comments always. When I got in the ring, I, I pretty much said, hey, man, I think we're up 4-0. You can feel free to kind of let go a little bit now and freestyle. We've, you Isn't felt that her? the point, though, not to freestyle? Because if you're up 4-0, you can take it. Yes. yes, that's the point. Right. That was the whole training camp is not to. Right. The whole training camp was not to do that, expecting her to do it. That's what we know that now we know it's the entire training camp. Hey, this is the strategy, but we know for a fact that when a bell rings, you're going to do what you want to do. And we fully support that. So now we get into the ring, we get into the fight. It's about to start round five. And we're pretty much saying, Hey, we've seen what we need to see. We know where you are and what you're capable of. You can, you can open up now and almost like as if you could see Rose go, ha ha, no, no, no. Yeah, oh, yeah, uh huh. trying. You try to trick me. It's like we're not. She st She was so prepared to stick to the game plan. She actually stuck to the game plan when we were telling her, "All right, you can ditch it and go to something else." Now, she stuck to it. She stayed completely disciplined. She stayed completely disciplined the entire time, and so so did Carla. Yeah, I, I mean, so I'm curious what your response would be to the criticism because this has been one of the things that's been said by fellow coaches and obviously people <coughs> online. Um, you're too close to the situation. You have one of the best coaches in MMA, Trevor Whitman there. He should be speaking more in between rounds. He should be the one talking to her and you're kind of number two. How do you respond to that? It's, it's, it's fine. I'm fine with the, the world thinks of me. Uh, it's no matter what, like no matter what, it's my fault, right? Pat, you shouldn't be talking. You shouldn't be nothing. You, I'm the closest person. I'm the closest person to her. I know what I'm looking at more than anyone else. Like, I know what I'm looking at when I see, I know what I see when she's in there more than anybody, more than, more than anybody, man. I'm 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Like, I know what I'm, I know what it is that I'm looking at. I know what it is that I feel. I know, um, pretty much like where Rose is at any point in time, based off her facial expression, people are going to say that, but those are the same people that I have to ask. Like, what if Rose would have jumped in the air and started doing spin kicks and gotten taken down, crucifixed and elbowed in the face? Now what? 
you know, now what? Like now, now what? Did, now what? Did now now I made the bad now I made the bad call by saying go in there and freestyle because th- there's no winning. You know what I mean? Like that's why that's why the, what the world says about Pat doesn't matter to Pat. It doesn't matter to Rose, and that's why it doesn't matter to Pat. If it mattered to her, if it bothered her what the world said, then that would probably be a thing. But it doesn't. It's all about staying focused, being a professional, doing your job to the best of your abilities. For Rose's eyes, is staying safe, not getting dropped on your neck because you made a bad decision, not getting punched in the nose with one punch because you did that one thing that you weren't supposed to do. It's about winning fights, being the best version of yourself that you can be. And I, I, I know what Rose is in the ring. That's, that's what the training camps go. That's how they go. I know who's in there when she's in there. And I'm able to make certain decisions based on um, what's going on in the scenario. Now, we also speak in code. Not everybody knows what we're talking about when we're saying it. I'm not saying, hey, the crowd's booing. Yeah, it's working. Keep doing that. Make them boo some more. That's not what's going on at all. You hear the crowd booing? Yes, that means that you're right on track. The thing that you're doing, the game plan that you're sticking to, the strategy that you that we've all as a collective team come up with that we've all agreed on, this is part of it. And you're going to have that opening and you're going to see it. And she saw it. She saw it twice. I think I, actually there was three, but she saw it twice and she acted on it. And that foot slid, man. That foot slid. And it's not, it's, it wasn't at that moment wasn't worth the risk. You know, I mean, there's a, there's a, I think four minutes into round one, there's a lack of action going. Mm. DC, Joe Rogan, they're all, they're joking about how much nothing's happening in the fight. And four minutes into round one, DC talking about the lack of action, joking about it, says to pull up the fight stats, like pull up the punch stats or something like that. Pull up the stats. And four minutes into round one, he says Rose has landed three of 33 punches and Carla has landed three of 27 punches. Now I have to go back and watch that again, but I don't know if 57 punches <laughs> were thrown in the first four minutes. Mm. I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know if 57 punches were thrown in the first four minutes. So I kind of am assuming that if they say Rose landed three out of 33 and Carla landed three out of 27 in the first four minutes, that they have to be counting mm. that as 12 punches. And if they're counting that as 12 punches, then that means that they've counted every takedown attempt as a takedown. That's the only thing that makes sense because there for sure wasn't 49 punches thrown in the first four minutes. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't know. That's why coming out of those rounds, it was like, yep, that's what you're supposed to do. That's one down. Yep, that's exactly what you're supposed to do. That's two down. Hey, I know you saw the overhand. And it was there, and I saw your foot slide. Don't sweat it. The opportunity will present itself again. We're up three rounds. Hey, man, we're up 4-0. I mean, I don't actually know what's happening, but according to my eyes and us in the corner, I think we might be up 4-0. Now, we're also fully aware that at the end of that fight, I think you, you said you're pretty content with you did not, not earning that win like oh yeah i mean i didn't feel like i won yeah. but i definitely didn't feel like carla won and i definitely didn't feel like i lost you know what i'm saying it's just, like, just one of so those it, was, it definitely was one of those things where it was like oh okay. it was just one, one of one of those fights man where there's a high level a high level strategy going on by two extremely dangerous girls and they just that's how it played out man but it's usually it is kind of weird because like uh oh sorry it is kind of weird that um you uh, usually in, when, when fights go the distance for me, like uh, throughout the fight, I'm thinking about, okay, what are the judges seeing? I didn't, I didn't really, uh, I don't think I was really thinking about that this fight. I was thinking about like my goals of like, I, I wanted Carla to know one, I wasn't going to do what her corner wanted me to do because they kept like, they kept wanting me to come out of my game plan and, um, yeah, and every time I'll step forward, to be like, oh, there's her foot. Okay, now she's going to do the thing because she's like, she's going to crack because everybody's booing. That's what they basically, he said in the corner, like, or whatever at one point. So I knew that they wanted me to, like, get flustered by that. And I was like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm staying solid in myself. Like, I'm not going to let you control me, you know, <laughs> like, I'm controlling myself. And, and then, uh, 
So, so I guess I wasn't really thinking about like the judges in my mind. I felt like I won the fight because of all that other stuff going on. Like it is more of a, like a psychological battle for me, you know, as far as like, no, I'm gonna do what I want to do, but I get it, you know, like, so whatever. But, um, I still have to watch it again too. I watched it like once, but, uh, but I also felt like, you know, I also proved like I, I, my, I feel like my takedown was cleaner than hers and he, like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, I think ultimately like I wasn't really thinking about the judges, but so I wasn't really confused or I, I wasn't really like, Oh, like, I wonder what it's going to be. Like I was pretty solid. Like, yeah, I won that. But thinking in retrospect, like, I don't know. Yeah. The, for sure. People seen something else. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't, um, it wasn't the, it wasn't the action packed. Sure. Wild fight that people expect when it comes to Rose. It wasn't the, it wasn't the, oh, we're in for something special. Here we go. It wasn't that type of, it wasn't that type of fight. That's what people were expecting. You know, that's what people were expecting. And that was the game plan. The game plan, the strategy was to first round KO Carla. That's- oh, I was going to say one more thing. It's like, so one thing that I think maybe was a mistake as far as just my mentality was, um, you know, throughout history, I've, I've always been an exciting fighter and I've always been very offensive and it's always been to the point where people like coach, you know, coaches got to coach me back. Like usually they got to tell me to pull it back. So I was really trying to grow and evolve myself as a, as a fighter by controlling that and not being like whatever. And so I got, I did it like too much to the point where like now, like because I, I think I trusted in my, um, of natural abilities for my offense that I felt like it was as soon as I like see her, I'm going to just, uh, it's going to come out, you know, as opposed to like, you know, continue to like visualize that and really like work on that. Um, uh, as much, like I put more priority, like usually my training camps go, like I work on taking care of my defense game planning wise. And then as I get closer, I'm just winning and I'm just thinking about offense. Whereas, uh, I kind of did it sort of backwards this training camp where it was like a mixture of like my offense and defense. And then as I got closer, I was like, I just got paranoid about the defense that I was like, I'm putting all priority on that. And then it sort of just like, I was like, but when I get there, I'm going to, I'm going to like, my body's just going to take over. And I, I was training like the opportune moments to do those type of things, but um, the emphasis wasn't on that. And, you know, it was, and I, like, I guess I, I kind of overly believed in my ability to do that, uh, without actually like putting that effort in. Um, so, so that's maybe like one mistake, but like I said, there's all like adjustments that you can make. I don't think there was any mistakes. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to jump back in here real quick. Can I, I can I ask a question though? Can I ask a question? Um, yeah. I remember and if, uh, it's for both of you, honestly, I, it, there's really no, no, it's for you too, Pat. I mean, you're a big part of the okay. story as well. I remember the last time we spoke after you lost the belt and very different circumstances. And you, you said you were relieved, right? You were relieved. You, you didn't really like life as a champion. Now I know that you said this time around, you liked life that, as a champion more, you know, you, you figured out things, you've grown as a person. Now that you're no longer champion, do you like life as a champion, as, as, as a non-champion again? Like, are you happy to not be champion? Are, are you, have you come to the conclusion that you're happier as a person hey. without the belt? Um, be, I think I know what you're saying, or I know the question because it's like, yeah, I don't physically, I'm not the actual champion anymore, but like I, and I, I've, that's another thing that I'm at peace with is because this title reign was totally different from the last one. As far as like just my time doing that, I enjoyed it. Um, but I'm also enjoying this side of things too. Like I'm enjoying everything. Um, because, and one thing is like, you can never take away what I've done. You know, I am a champion, like, and I'll always be a champion. So for that, like, I enjoy the life as a champion still, <laughs> but uh, whatever comes with the actual materialistic belt and all that stuff, like, I don't know. I mean, it's cool. You know, I, it's, it's a responsibility for sure. And if, if I had, I come out as the victor in this fight, yeah, it would have been, you know, it would have been pretty intense. So like there's pros and cons to each of that, each of those things, of course, what I, if, if, if uh, a part of me for sure would have loved that, you know? Um, and then there's another part of me that's like, it's okay with not that because, you know, get, get to get back to like other things in life, you know? Okay. 
but for sure, <laughs> but for sure, being the champion is better. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> for sure, for sure, being the champion is better. It just in when it comes to thinking about yeah. that, when it comes to that type of thing, of course, man. No, winning is always going to be better than anything else. <laughs> But in this scenario, like I said, uh, training camp, the, the the time in, what's been done already, what uh, Rose's actual goals are. I mean, the Rose has never been one for, not a not a not not one for legacy or my record is fifteen and zero nonstop. That's never been a thing for her. Rose. Is a martial artist, like she's a martial artist uh, to the fullest extent. And um, when it comes to that when it comes to that, that's the part of it that, uh, that drives her the most that, uh, has, you know, the, the, the most, uh, fire behind it. Um, there was something that Rose was looking for in this fight that she got somewhere in that five rounds. She got what she was looking for, whatever that bit of information was that she was looking for. She got, she got in that five rounds, hence the slap on the back of the end. And in the, in the, in the, in the, when they caught eyes, like, Good fight. Whatever, whatever it was that she needed, she got out of that. You know, and now the result, not what we wanted. And of course not, not what we wanted. But if there was, a, if there was a way for this to go, that would suck. This is probably the best of the sucky outcomes because there was personal goal that she reached, there was a goal as the team, as coaches that we were able to achieve, that we got, that we got out of it. You know, I mean, it's just, if, if, if you follow Rose's history, if you follow Rose's history, it's usually amazing things and then maybe a setback. Mm. And then something even more amazing and then a setback. And then something really, really amazing. Now a setback. So if we go off of history and if we go off of patterns, in a way, this is kind of exciting for myself being a fan for people out there in the world. Because traditionally, the way it goes is after a setback, here comes something amazing. You know, now it all it is is a moment in time. It's an experience. It's something that we learn from. And it's something that, um, just like the other setbacks, it's something that Rose has already grown from and is going to grow even more from. Can we'll take a, take a minute to step back, take a look at everything, everything that we worked on, all of the growth that was made. One, th- but I say this was the best training camp she's ever had because this is where the most mental growth came from. This whole fight was all about not getting distracted. I mean, fights are like that all the time. But a big portion of this fight was not getting distracted with the outside world, not letting things happen that are going to cause you to do that thing that you do every once in a while where you run the risk of things not turning out so well. It was all about that. It's like all like the whole training camp, barely getting online. Like people, you know what I mean? If you can get caught up in that, you can get caught up in the flash. You can get caught up in the gold chains. You can get caught up in the, you know, suits with oiled chest, no shirt under it. Like you can get, it's very easy to get caught up in those things. I mean, Rose barely got online. Sorry to everybody out there who felt like as if maybe she uh, kind of disappeared a little bit during the training camp, but she got offline because Every time you get online, you only see things that are going to distract or potentially cause some type of frustration. If every, for instance, for instance, uh, you remember Whaley one where Rose did the interview with the guy Mm. where she started talking about dead versus red. And that was a thing that Lithuania did during the yada, yada, yada. And then the guy took the interview. And then when he wrote it, he wrote, Rose says dead versus red injects politics into, in the, you know what I mean? And he sent that article out and that whole fiasco started. Whereas that's not, that was never the intention. Fool, we were never saying anything about her being red. That was, that was never the intention. You just wrote it that way. It's the same scenario with this whole Sean Strickland thing that's all over the place everywhere. So years ago, years ago, Rose did an interview. And in the interview, she said, 
I joined Rufus Sport when I was 14 years old. And then I left Rufus Sport for a few years. And then I came back to Rufus Sport to pursue my MMA career. And this is where I met my fiance, Pat Barry. Did the entire interview. And when the guy wrote the interview up, he wrote, Rose Nami Yunus joined Rufus Sport when she was 14 years old, where she met her fiance, Pat Barry, when she was 14 years old. That's where everybody's getting all this shit from. A botched interview. That's where everybody's getting all this from because somebody wrote something, however they decided, and people read it and it's credible and they just run with it. It's those types of things everywhere that are causing us or causing Rose to get into the fight with Carla and to be emotional and to be however she's supposed to be. All of that. It's a nonstop, non nonstop, man. We had a, not conspiracy things, but there was just there's there's things everything coming at us trying to take her mind off the game can, and it didn't work this time can i ask it about it works every time i talk about you even when you, you're on the show when i say you're going to be on the show i get the the comments about your relationship right um are you gonna ask him about this are you gonna ask him about that do you want to address the the history of your relationship once and for all do you do no no okay no it, bro, we don't we don't sweat that. We haven't sweated that for years. Like I said, this is no matter what happens. Even if I tell you exactly how it went down, it's gonna get. It, bro, we don't. That's not. We've that's we've we've passed we've passed we've passed that years ago. It used to be a moment. It used to be a moment. Like, where's all this shit coming from? Where's all this hate coming from? And then we found we found the art, just like the dead versus red that got spun way out of control. We found we found the article. Don't have to get in touch with anybody. We know that everyone out there is going off of something that's not right. And there's no point in trying to go and correct everyone and try to get the word out there. And that's not, oh, that's not what I, bro, that's pointless. Yeah, it's like, that's pointless. That's pointless, man. It's pointless. The people who know us know, like her mom and her family, my mom, my family, her grandmothers, like the people who know us know. The people who don't are going off of or go, the people who know Rose's actual history, like the people who know Rose's actual history about being groomed since she was six years old. And she knows exactly what that's like. You know, what I mean, people know people know they're just reading something and they're just running with it. Just shit to talk about. So, no, that's nothing that we ever intend on addressing. Like there was what's bro, we we know what's happening. They yeah, people people who matter know what's happening. They know what's going on. It's all just a distraction to get Rose to come out of her game. And the next thing you know, she's getting crucified, crucifixed by Carla and put in a situation where she has to tap now. And now Thug Rose with all of the amazing things that she's done and she's so amazing. Now you you're tapping the Carla. Or which is which is which is which is completely she's capable of doing that. But now right. you you are in a scenario where if you stray away from the game plan and you put yourself in a spot where she's going to take it away from you, you're going to be fucked in the head for the rest of your life, man. And, and I know. There's probably a good chance that I would have, you know, could have, I mean, there's definitely like either, either one of both would be like us could have brutally finished each other in a very devastating fashion too, mm -hmm. you know? Could I mean, I'm not saying you're not saying that. It just, just, like, just, run, just runs the risk. Yeah. Before, before, before we go too far, scenarios. before just yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt, but before we go too far, because I don't want something to get taken out of context here, and like, you know, you, oh for sure, you, it's, it's you, gonna you went gonna you went by you 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 went right by something that is a pretty big deal to say, uh, and I understand that it's personal, but you you said groomed since six. Obviously, you're not referring to yourself, but that's a huge thing to say. I don't think anyone knows that, but do you want to? Everybody know. Everybody knows that. I've been uh, everybody, you know, everybody, the public, or you mean the history? Everybody, everybody knows about Rose's history. I think one of the ultimate fires that I have is history of being sexually abused. You know, like every, since I was a little kid. So, okay. you know, yeah, I thought everybody knew that, but I every, guess not. not okay. Probably not. But <laughs> I should probably watch the Ultimate is, Fighter more. I'm not a huge Ultimate Fighter fan. I'm sorry. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, there's, well, then, there's, yeah. there's, there's something coming out soon that you'll see that tells everything. Oh, really? Like a documentary soon. or something? Um, something like that. Okay. All right. But you, I just, you know, Something this is like personal that. stuff. It's one thing to criticize you as a coach. It's another thing to criticize you as a human being, as a partner, as a fiance. So I just wanted to, if, if you, if it doesn't bother you, if you don't want to totally, but I wanted to give you the opportunity because you know, it comes up often. 
Uh, and it has come yeah, up. Like I said, so it, you, it, it all it all st- it all stems back to one article written a long okay. time ago. OK, one article written. She did an interview. She said what she said. They took the interview. They wrote it however they want to write it. And that's the one thing that everybody's going off of. Okay. So that's the one thing you read that in an interview somewhere. And that's the one thing I can't believe. Like, you know what I mean, like I, that's 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 it. That's it. And we we've we've over the years, we've talked about it here and there. We've pointed. Yeah, the articles are uh, written pretty terribly. But this is something that um, we're past that. Years ago, this was a problem. Yeah. Years ago, she really, this was a problem. With, but this isn't, that's not a thing, man. Okay. I've got a, I've got a three sec, I've got a three second knockout that people criticized me. It was only three seconds. Like, no matter what, everyone, people are going to take, they're going to say whatever they want to say all the time. Mm-hmm. All the, all the time. Like I said, her mother loves me. My mother loves her. People like, I, <laughs> you mean, it's, mm-hmm. what? People. Oh, I was saying, I mean, you know, just like, people <laughs> spit on Jesus. People so. spit on Jesus. <laughs> Uh, that's, uh, yeah. you know, uh, everybody gets some hate no but it, it's it's not that's not a that's not it. sean strickland and i are actually kind of cool we're actually kind of friends really actually bro we've hey every time we see him we laugh and joke with this dude all the time yeah, we're on man. the bus, in New York we're on the bus hanging out with this, out this dude all the time you know like just like it's it's he's that's showing he that's show, he that's sl- he crept in some earth he slid into my DM. that's that's <laughs> just like why then why what yeah, that's right it's it's showing but strickland yeah, but it's it's head. fine okay like i said this isn't um this isn't <laughs> the type of thing that we sit up uh trying to figure out you know I mean, we're not where is he bro people are gonna say what people are gonna say no matter what mm-hmm. like no matter what and i can always point back to a botched interview, just like the dead versus yeah. red thing. Just a botched interview. That's it. Let me Everything, ask you this. See, oh. Let me ask you this. Um, because we have like 10 or so minutes left, unfortunately. I appreciate the time from both of you. Uh, you mentioned at the very beginning, you know, this is not going to be one of those things where she disappears for three years and you're not going to hear from her. So does that mean Rose wants to get back in there relatively quickly? Does that mean she's going to fight um, again this year? Does that mean, what, what does that mean? Is there's, she, there's, after after Saturday, there's definitely there's definitely this is the moment to take a step back. Okay. Just for a second. Just take a step back. This isn't like I said, that's why I wanted to come on here and tell you this isn't the moment where Rose runs off into the woods and we don't see her again for three years. Like this isn't this isn't that moment this, that we didn't get that result. You know, what I mean, Saturday night, Rose, Rose didn't get demolished by Carla. She she didn't. She uh I probably pissed some people off. Probably <laughs> probably probably yeah. a lot of people. Probably, yeah. probably a lot of people. But that's yeah. a lot of people who are just they're just that's a lot of people who are here just to see blood people you know, get kicked in the face and lay on the ground unconscious. Like that's, that's 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 what was expected because that is the type of thing that you produce, man. You've got some yeah. of the best highlight reels out there. I love every second of it. The expectations were high. So expectations yeah. were very high. <laughs> And it just, it turned out to be a fight where both, both, um, both opponents didn't stray away from the game plan uh-huh. and both opponents were waiting for the other one to crack, waiting for the other one to break. And they just, ne- neither one, neither one broke yeah. and everyone expected Rose to, but she didn't, she stuck to it. But guess what? Now Zero distractions. Exciting. What was that? That was one of that was one I mean, of it's that, already exciting, but I think it's more exciting now. That was one of the things that um came out of this fight. I don't know who can get in touch with her, but I heard Rose say that she would love to help Joanna be Whaley. Oh Bruh, can you imagine can you imagine that? Joanna's coming up in seven mm-hmm. minutes on this show. I could ask her right on the spot. She's next. <laughs> Bruh, R- R- you want me to? You know, I had it that, that was I didn't like totally uh make that decision in my mind yet, but I just was kind of like thinking about it. Okay. Um, yeah. And nothing, nothing like personal against Whaley or anything, but you know, Henry Tahuto was kind of talking some crap before, <laughs> uh, <laughs> before our rematch. So, you know, I don't know. <laughs> okay. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, but you're not going away. You're not, you're, you're not done fighting. You're not going away. You still want to do this. All the criticism, you know, sometimes you know, the criticism I, I'm a martial artist, man. I, I'm lifelong martial artist. So wherever that takes me, you know, that's, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm still a huge fan of the sport. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I just got to really reevaluate some things, you know, look at the patterns. <laughs> and if anything, I feel like, I'm sorry, I may cut, cut you off, but I mean, since the fight's been over, I feel like I've been shadow boxing more than, uh-huh. <laughs> than 
maybe during training camp. It's just because I'm like, I started coming up, up with like training ideas and stuff, you know, like of just however that manifests. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I can't say right now, but as far as, uh, yeah, like, I mean, I'm, I'm super excited for, 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 you know, uh, those two ladies like Whaley and, uh, you I think them, uh, th- I think that's gonna be a really good fight. I'm excited. Well, whatever. I don't know. Hold on, man. I gotta get in here, <laughs> Sorry. man. Okay. I'm gonna go downstairs. Um, okay. So if you're a fan of Rose, right? Like I am, and you go over her history and you go over Rose's record and you go over patterns, right? If you get stuck on numbers, I never got, I, I used to never get stuck on numbers, but now I kind of have to because numbers is a big thing in here, right? If you go off of history and if you go off of patterns, we've seen Rose do amazing things and then have a stumble and then come back revamped and do amazing things and have a stumble. And then she comes back revamped and it's, just, it's over and over again, bro. And I'm not excited that we lost this fight. We tr- the plan was, was to win. Rose was supposed to knock Carla out in the first round. She was that was supposed to happen. That's what we prepped to do. And just something was just stopping it from happening, man. Something was just stopping it from happening. But Rose didn't just go get handled by Carla. And Rose didn't do something she wasn't supposed to do. And now you're getting tapped out, which I believe, I don't know, but I believe that's something that you don't. You don't come back from with everything that you've done for you to go in after all this time and experience and for you to go in, just be careless. And if you lose, if you lose like that, which is completely possible, it's happened before. You're never going to forgive yourself, man. I get tagged in the Czech Congo video every day, man, every day for the rest of my life, every day. I'm the other guy in that video. And you've been in scenarios where you are shining. Make one mistake and you get dropped on your head. Everybody thinks you did. You've made scenarios where you've been shining. You've made one mistake and now you got punched one time in the nose. Your whole face swelled up and everyone thinks that you lost that fight now because you got hit once. Like there's been scenarios like that, man. And she stuck to the game plan. It's my job as a coach. I have to be, I have to make sure that Rose's mental state for life stays as good as it can. She went in there, she did her best with what she had versus a very, 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 like, game opponent. And she did something that she's never done before, man. She stuck to a strategy, and she didn't, she didn't, she didn't crack. Even when we told her, hey, all right, you can abandon, like, she didn't, she stuck to it, man. Like I said, whatever it was that she, and I know she was looking for something, whatever it was that she was looking for, she got. And because of that, she came out a better person and because of the result we can only assume she's going to come back 10 times better than she ever was it's just going to take a second we just have to go and figure out we have to, she has to figure it out she has to figure it out figure it out but when she does we've seen this over and over again bro the next time you see thug rose it's going to be amazing every time tell me once that hasn't happened it's happened every time man she has a stumble. She's already doing push-ups, fool. She's not, she's not joking. She's been shadow boxing nonstop. You know it's just, it's eating her up right now, man. But she's got it under control. It's going to take some time. We started the garden back two days ago. We're already on it, bro. We're already back on the garden. She's not concerned with what we talked about earlier, the things out there in the world. Yeah. She's not concerned. She's not, she's good, bro. She's good. And not only is she good, honestly, man, it's been a while since I've seen her this happy. Wow. And that's the only thing that, that's the only thing that matters to me, bro. Like it's, it sucks. We lost. It sucks that you don't have to fly around the country talking about being the goat now, which Mm -hmm. that's not a thing for her. Legacy is not a thing for her. Like wins, loss, that's not a thing for her. She just wants to compete. She wants to compete. She wants to compete at the highest level to the best of her abilities. And being a martial artist, Rose does this so she can learn things about herself. That's why she does it. She's not financially motivated. Rose doesn't do this for money. She doesn't do this for the, for the bling and the stars and the, mm-hmm. the adoration. She doesn't do it for that. Most of us do. 
but she doesn't do it for that. And that's, that's, that's rare, man. That's special. That's special and it's rare. I get to be a part of it every day. She does this for something else. And that something else is what makes her happy. And it's only, I'm, 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 I'm just being a fan now. Yeah. According to history, we're about to be in for a treat. Like according to history, man, shit's about to get. All right. Pat, I appreciate oh, God, it. I appreciate it, man. Thank, Thank you, you for coming Thank on. Thank you, man. Thank you for talking about this. I know it's uh, not always easy after, you know, a setback, if you will, or a tough night at the office. So I appreciate both of you. I don't know if she can hear me, but thank you to Rose as well. And uh, appreciate you coming on and addressing some of these things. Yeah, yeah no problem, brother. I just, wanted to let, I just wanted to let you know, there's a lot of different types of losses that you yeah. can have. This one, this one ain't that bad. All right. Thank this, you, Pat. This, 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 one, this, one, this one ain't that bad. Best to you guys. Talk to you soon. All right, brother. Thanks, man. All right. Later. There he is, Pat Barry and Rose Namajunas as well. Uh, interesting stuff from the two of them. I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of uh, thoughts on uh, their responses, but uh, overall, good to see that she is in good spirits.